I've been looking at making a high performance battery for running on my bikes and also for testing out new configurations and building techniques. To be this flexible, using lithium polymer or LiPo batteries seem to be the obvious choice. That said, this is not something that I've rushed into in particular and considerable time has been spent learning about the lithium polymer batteries and more importantly, um, how to use them in a safe way. Before I get started on my battery pack, uh, I wanted to say a big thank you to the guys at West Coast Electric Bikes. Um, they have an excellent video out there on the internet, um, on YouTube, which some of you probably have seen. Uh, it's very, very detailed, and a lot of the decisions I've made for my use of LiPo um, have been based on the recommendations made in that video. Um, I've also got this uh, pretty cool bag. This is the, the reflective tape. Um, from his website as well and uh, yeah I'm going to be building my battery in that bag. I do want to make it clear with LiPo batteries that I am not like the world's greatest expert by any means. Um, I'm learning about this stuff. Um, I have put a lot of research into it so I, hopefully I'm being safe but um, yeah you want to do your own work first before you think about this kind of thing. Um, if people have comments or suggestions, particularly more experienced LiPo users, um, I'd, I'd love to hear from them. Um, that would be really good. Um, before I sort of really start talking about the LiPo, um, I'm going to look at um, a bit about batteries first. Um, so if you already know all about LiPo batteries and other lithium batteries, um, what I'm going to do is put some timestamps in the description down below, and then you can skip ahead to the part where I actually stick my battery together but I just didn't really feel comfortable in showing a lot of this without talking about some of the safety aspects and some of the other aspects of lithium ion batteries first. It's been made pretty clear from my research that LiPo batteries are something to be respected. If something does go wrong with the cell for any reason, there is the potential for them to puff up and start to vent gas, and then there's the potential for them to catch fire. I'm not expecting this to happen. Uh, I picked these particular cells here um, for their characteristics to help prevent that from happening. Um, but there's nothing wrong in being prepared for such an eventuality. And it's with that in mind that I chose my location for charging. So I'm gonna be charging my LiPo batteries in this fireplace. So if a pack should somehow go bad or unbalanced or the BMS fail and a fire does start in the pack, it's going to go up the chimney. I also have in standby a bucket or two buckets of sand over there and a dry chem fire extinguisher because you definitely don't want to use water to put out a lithium fire. Um, I'm also going to be present during the charging. Um, it's not like with a 52 volt pack that I have um, just down over here that I can just plug into my satiator and then leave it overnight to charge to 85%. Um, I'm going to charge this one when I'm present in the room. Um, I do most of my work on bikes down here anyway, so it, it's not a problem to be in here and you know sit with it and work while it charges for about an hour. Another important consideration safety-wise is protection for the batteries. Um, which is why I'm using this uh, bag from West Coast Electric Cycles. Um, it's got really decent amount of protection here around the top, sides, bottom, where the uh, where the batteries are going to sit. I might put a bit of uh, some sort of tough plastic or something else in just in case, but I mean, I think it's going to do a good job. Um, the batteries themselves have uh, quite a thin coating around the edge um, and if something did spike through it um, you can get venting and you can get a fire again. Um, I have seen these on fire having been in a crash so it's definitely worth uh, doing a good job to protect them. There are a few more other safety considerations um, to do with linking them together in the harnesses um, but I'm going to talk about that when we actually get to linking them together in the harnesses later on in, in the video. Um, I don't want to alarm anybody with LiPo. It's not like they're going to explode or blow up in your hands or anything, but it's like, it's like anything really. It's like um, putting gas in your car or petrol if you live in England and Australia, but um, it's like using anything like that. You have to treat it with respect. And if you do, you'll be fine. So treating these in respect with, or with respect um, means charging them in the proper place um, and it means being very careful when wiring them together and charging them. 
To help explain how lithium polymer is configured, I'm going to start out with the battery that I've been running my bikes on so far. It's a 25.6 amp hour pack and I got this one from em3ev.com. It's made up of 126 of these Samsung 30Q cells. These individual cells are generally connected uh, via spot welding the ends into larger voltage packs. So if you go from negative to positive uh, in series, you add the voltages together. And if you run batteries in parallel, then you add the capacity together. Um, so inside this, there are 126 and they are arranged in series and parallel. So 14 cells in series and then nine parallel sets of those 14 batteries. And that gives you a total pack voltage of 52 volts. So that's 3.7 volts a cell times 14. Um, the capacity is 3000 milliamp hours per cell. And that comes out by the parallel sets. So 3000 times nine gives you 27,000. Although in reality, that much capacity is not available to you. In fact, uh, to prolong the lifespan of a battery like this, it is of benefit not to charge it to full capacity. Um, I use the, uh, the cycle satiated by Grin, um, just excellent, uh, best charger I've, I've had or used so far. Um, that you can see there, it's set to the 85% charge and that's the routine charge that I put this battery pack through and it will get me to work and back two days running. Um, so there's no real need to go to 100% unless I really, really want the extra bit of speed, which I do sometimes. It's a bit of fun. Um, when you discharge it, uh, it's best not to go below 20%. Um, I mean, I rarely go below 50% in my general use of the battery. Um, only on longer rides have I gone below that. Um, and yeah, so that's, uh, that's this pack um, with LiPo packs. The format's a little different in appearance, but it's really following the same format type um, as these cells here. So the number one reason why I chose these particular batteries was performance. I'm intending to do a bit of stuff on the, uh, the local ice race track that they have this winter. So having a battery with very low internal resistance seemed to be the way to go. Um, the performance characteristics that I saw online seem to show very little voltage sag under loads, and that's definitely proven to be the case in the ride tests that I've done so far. Uh, they're rated at 75C continuous and 150C for bursts, and that stacks. So, you know, when you put them in series, it gives really, really high performance there. Uh, the second reason um, is one of lifespan. Um, LiPo batteries tend to not last as long as Samsung cells. Um, at least that's what I've that's what I've heard about. Um, the 300 cycle range seems to be pretty good. Um, reports I've read have said that these graphene ones come in up towards more than 900 cycle range, and Although they're definitely more expensive, I think they're about 50% more expensive than the other batteries I was looking at. They're not three times the price. So, you know, I think that seemed to me to be an economical option. Um, in reality, I'm not going to be stressing these batteries with the bikes that I have so much. And it's also going to allow for a future more powerful build um, with different motors uh, if I get to that point or when I get to that point. Um, and then I guess the final reason is that um, from reports, they're also a little kinder in terms of balancing and a little easier to balance. And for a relatively new user like myself, I found that to be uh, an attractive thing too. Um, so that's the reason why I chose these cells over other different kind of packs. Um, other packs will work fine and lots of people use them, but that's my reason for choosing these. Uh, I guess time is going to tell and I will definitely update more on how I use these packs, you know, six months, a year and see how it's going. So I'm going to be using three sizes of lithium polymer or LiPo pack to produce e-bike batteries of 52 volts or 72 volts. Uh, I could also do a 36 volt pack or a 48 volt pack if I wanted to. 
think. Um, so the sizes that I picked are the 6S, which is the, the biggest one here, and then the 4S and also the 3S. So for example, in this 3S pack contained within this packaging around the outside are three individual cells. And if you unwrapped all this and separate them out, they would look like the picture that I've hopefully remembered to show. Um, so each cell works with exactly the same um, voltages and everything else, um, apart from capacity, as this Samsung 30Q cell here. So both of these cells here have, all, all the cells in here, um, have an operating voltage of 3.7 volts, and they are 4.2 volts fully charged, 3.3 roughly discharged. Um, so this being a three cell series pack, um, so it's three times 3.7, which is the 11.1 .1 volts you can see on the front of the pack there. Um, it's 12.6 volts fully charged, which is 4.2 times three. Um, but these packs actually have a 6,000 milliamp hour capacity. So the equivalent of this pack in these cells would be I actually don't have enough to do it, but I can do it with the, with one of the HD2 cells as well. So you would connect three in series here, all right? And that would give you your 11.1 .1 volts in the series, um, but then you would need another three cells. So another one, two, three here in a parallel run to give you the same capacity as this one pack here. In terms of physics, um, to make a, a larger battery um, out of either these cells or these cells, there isn't really that much difference at all. Um, the main difference is in how you're wiring them together, and in this one you're using spot welding, and with these batteries you're using um, a harness like, like this one here, and you plug in these connectors, these XT90 connectors, in to make your series connections. Um, and once they're all plugged in, you get your total voltage here, just as you would by connecting series of, of, of those cells there. Um, there are a few more safety considerations that you need to look at, though, before you start plugging these batteries into a harness like this. Um, the first one is to make sure all of the packs are of identical capacity. So in this case, all of the packs here and all the cells in this pack have a 6,000 milliamp hour capacity. Um, I would also recommend that you probably go with the same brand of pack um, because different brands of packs will have different internal resistances. Um, it's just generally a good idea, I have heard, to go with the same kind of pack when building a bike battery like this. So I went with this particular brand. Um, it's also very important to make sure that each of the individual cells within these boxes or within these packages is of the same voltage. So each individual cell is 3.7 volts across all of the 14 cells that are within these packs here. This is um, what's referred to as the cells being balanced. If the cells are not balanced, packs have a much greater chance of having some sort of failure when you're out riding um, or charging. Um, and what can happen is if a cell within one of these packs was of a lower voltage than other cells and the pack starts to deplete, then maybe that cell might go under the, the low voltage limit of 3.3 and then you can get them puffing up and potentially causing venting and fires. So I've already got these batteries already charged um, and ready to go into a 52 volt pack. Um, I used the satiator to put an initial charge on them um, and then I checked that they were all in balance using this balance charger. Um, every so often you do want to use the balance charger to make sure that these are in balance but you can see that there with 4.07 volts for each of the three cells that are contained within this 3S pack and it's the same voltage on all those other cells for the individual cells in those series packs too um, so that they are the same voltages when I put them together in series with the harness. So once the charge is correctly on all of the batteries and they're the same, you use a series harness like this and you basically plug all the XT90 connectors into this in series 
and then you get the final pack voltage. So I'll do that now and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. So all of these batteries are now connected in series. Um, and because I have two parts of the bag, um, I'm going to be using two parallel groups of these batteries. So the total voltage of each side is 52 volts. And when I connect these two again here, again using um, this harness here, there's then going to be two again in parallel. So with this uh, with this anti-spark XT90 connector at the end, it's still going to be 52 volts when I plug it into my bike. Um, this is actually a harness from Electric Race Technologies, um, and there's going to be uh, a charge port and a BMS unit. And uh, part two of the video, I'm going to look at integrating the, the BMS into it. Um, you can operate without a BMS. Um, it just makes it a lot simpler to, to have the BMS handle the charging and the balancing. Because if I want to balance these batteries, um, which you do have to do every now and again, um, I'm going to be using um, balance chargers to do that individually. So you have to unplug and plug the whole thing. So it's a little bit more uh, economical in terms of time to use um, a BMS. I also want to mention um, just a little bit in terms of safety um, that when you're linking two sets of batteries in parallel, um, it's absolutely essential that the voltage of both sides is the same. Um, because if not, it will try and shunt very rapidly um, because, I mean, it's thick gauge wires, right? So it will try and push voltage from one side to the other side. And what I can see here is you've got a, a 6S battery and you have a 3S battery. So in here you have an operating voltage of 22.2 and here you have an operating voltage of 11.1. .1. So if I was to link these via this um, parallel harness here. I'm not going to do it because it would be really stupid. Um, but if I did, it would try and shunt voltage from here to here to basically to equalize the voltages. And if you imagine that these are charged fully to 4.2 volts a cell, and that's what they, what they can have, you can't have more than that, it would shove voltage into a cell that can't really have any more in there. And that you know, is almost certainly going to cause that pack to pop up. In fact, I bet if you go looking on YouTube, you'll probably find someone that's actually done this um, and you can see how catastrophic it would be for the battery. So just make sure that they are properly wired and they are the same voltages before you stick them into something like this. So what I'm doing at the moment, while I haven't got the BMS hooked up, um, is to use my satiator here and I've just been doing what's called bulk charging. So you basically just charge through the standard connection here um, and I'm going to usually to 4.1 volts per cell which is plenty and if there are any slight imbalances that start to develop across the cells they're not going to cause me any real problems. Um, and then what I'm doing is every so often I'm then using the, the balance charger here. I actually have a couple of these and then I am charging them to capacity but balance charging. And that's gonna equalize any imbalances that may start to creep in across the cells. Um, so that's it for the moment for, for batteries. Uh, say in, in part two, I'm gonna look at integrating the, the Bluetooth BMS and show everybody how that works too. So sorry about the reflections, um, but the light's not very good down here at the moment. Um, but this is the battery pack wired and configured and on the bike. Uh, it just plugs into the to the battery connection on the controller. And uh, it's already on the, uh, the newly finished uh, CYC X1 bike. And uh, looking forward to going out for a ride tomorrow. So I'm sure I'll, uh, sure I'll post some stuff on that as well.